You know how, like the serious question, please take this seriously. I'm always serious. Okay. You know how the, everyone's always wondering how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Yeah. Can a woodchuck not chuck wood? A woodchuck can chuck wood. Right. So how, what's with the if? How much wood could a wood... No, because you don't know how much a woodchuck could chuck. If... Well, how much wood would, would a woodchuck chuck, chuck, chuck? How much wood could a woodchuck yeah. chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? If a woodchuck, why is why is that? If a woodchuck ah. could chuck wood, a prerequisite. It should be when a woodchuck could chuck wood. Just how much <laughs> could wood could a woodchuck chuck? The if a woodchuck could chuck wood. It's, it's so just, interesting. It's These are the big conversations and the big topics. People we are talking about this. Are having here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's a good this enough is... sound check. You sound great. Yeah. Um, you. I How do you know? You didn't even listen stuff. to me. No, it's okay. I can see the waves. Oh, oh. I've learned. I've I found a new feature. Okay, okay. and you're not gonna like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I, you you're not gonna care. But you know how we were like, we bought these mic stands, and we're like, wow, the audio is so much clearer. Yeah. At the same time, I'd updated the firmware of these mics. Oh, right. And you get little filters, and I put on like a broadcaster filter. Uh -huh. Sorry, this is all fake. We're fake news, but I've put on a word filter, uh, a voice filter. Oh, so we don't sound the way we actually sound. Well, it's apparently it's more true to how we sound. Is that so that you can listen to the sound of your own voice and not be like Whoa. disgusted? Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I recently edited uh, Ram. You'd, I'm sorry, you'd already edited Rave's podcast, but I mm -hmm. wanted to to tweak it and fine tune it a little bit. Yeah, and my voice is like a cheese grater. So we're using the ear. Auto, auto tune, right? Kind of, yeah. It still can't help I'm, us sing. Yeah, but I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just out of curiosity on that, is there a auto tune for singing? Is there there, must be. What feature? Yeah. I'm scared. I'll have to stop the recording yeah. in order to check. No, no, no. We'll check so, later. Uh, but, we'll check um, later. Yeah. It is a thousand degrees in here, despite it being cold outside. My skin is getting all red, so you might see red is patches it, is on it? my face. I'm okay, but huh? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm like baking. Okay. Um, I could take this off, but yeah. I this the look of this is much nicer than this the is cool. Underneath. It is a cool look. Um, yeah. Fuck it, vintage thrifted. This is just, just so, cool. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, how have you been? Happy New Year! This episode is coming out in like I think Feb. No, but like end of January. But this is the first time of the New Year. Yeah, absolutely. Just literally just got back, or yeah. fairly fairly recently. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. How's yeah. How's India? India was great. Yeah. India was. Uh, Why are you not fat? I was fat. No, you. In my eyes, I was looking in the mirror like. Yeah. Oh, too many gulab jamuns and too many, too much paneer. Uh, everything's just so keep, nice. Keep there. Seeing those beautiful words. To so, me. so we we had an event there for the family and so on, and um, just kind of like an introduction and, and things like that. And yeah. they had insane food. Yeah. Like Sam, you you would have loved it so much. And we're going to make right. sure that that food is here for the Good. for the wedding later this year. But I mean, there was a pizza. Yeah. And it was made of puff pastry. Oof. But like in a good way, oof, not in a weird way. I was just that was a good off. Yeah, it just melted. Me. Oh, it was insane. They, Did you go to a dosa party? Did yeah, I say that right? Yeah, so it, that like was an actual party. Yeah, no. So basically, people just do things bigger there. So okay. my one of my uncle, my mum's brother, yeah, he uh, has a house outside of the city, yeah, and then he invited loads of people over for a what? lunch. Yeah, and I was, oh, that's just a lunch. Yeah, lunch. And it looked huge. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was damn tasty. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, probably one of the best I've had. Yeah. So, Sounds incredible. Yeah, we're very well looked after when we go there, so it's yeah, good. Yeah. But too much time out there, and you get fat. You get <laughs> it's very tiring as well. Yeah, I find we're very on the go in the business, but mm. general life is is quite well balanced. Mm. Whereas there, it's just too much. Like I, you sh and you see, you, I, I think it's just because we're on holiday. Yeah, you just go, 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 and I'm not ready for that. So I think there's two elements to this. One, you're seeing. When was the last time you went to India? Three years ago. Three years ago, yeah. right? So you're seeing a lot of people you haven't seen in three years. Sure. So you're kind of a, a hot thing around town. You people right. Wanna, you're you're for the event. week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so people want to go around and come and see you. So <laughs> that's always a big deal. Because um, uh, my, my dad says that when he goes to Iraq. The whole month he's there, he gets invited to sure. so many different places. Yeah. The other thing is, um, is it in, in Indian culture, would you argue that Indian culture is very social? Yes. My mum said something not too long ago and it blew my mind. And that was like when she came to this country, she wasn't used to how isolated everybody is. Right. There's yeah. this whole thing of there of like, you know, people talk about open door policy or whatever. Yeah. But you're always around people. Yeah. Like sure. large groups of people. Mm -hmm. And me having grown up in, you know, in the West and like in Sweden, in the UK. Yeah. I don't understand that. 
because I, I, that's all I know. Yeah. But I imagine going back there, it would be a bit like people talk about, you know, social batteries. Yep. Did you feel like it was a lot of that? Yeah, it was. And maybe maybe your battery is ready for that. But it yeah. so so, you know, the first point you said of of course we were busy because people wanted to see us, but after a week they get bored of us. <laughs> we're no longer the hot thing in town. Yeah. That was definitely there. But genuinely I'm looking at my cousins around my age, a little bit older, here, there and everywhere, they've got kids. They are nonstop. Like mm. they it's so hard to get hold of them. Not just because even though we had come gone to visit we were only able to schedule like one or two dinners with some of my cousins because yeah. they were busy. They were going yeah. to a wedding. They were going here, left, right, and center. Yeah. A social club. It's, it's crazy. Mm. Um, good, bad? I don't know. Mm. I don't know where I stand. I think it's great that people meet so regularly. They socialize so regularly. Yeah. It's healthy. But I don't think I'm built for that anymore. Or I don't think if I'm ever built for that. I think yeah. whatever you're used to is good. Right. Right. And I think if changing from that kind of environment is bad. Yeah. I think that's the thing that my mum was like, it's so weird and isolated. But to me, for me to go to an environment like that, mm. it, like you say, it's magical for like a couple of weeks. And yep. then it really starts to drain you. And I'm sure you acclimate, but like, that's the thing. I think it's the change that's bad. But whatever, yeah. uh, both have the they're, they're positives. And yeah. yeah, you're right. It's what works for you. Yeah. Um, there. But it was nice. It was a breath of fresh air. And uh, yeah. you came to me, you'd noticed something out or you'd asked something out there mm. and you came to me and I was like, no, 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 no. We can't talk about this. This is too interesting. We mm. have to talk about it on the podcast. Yeah. And you told me something about your great grandfather. What was that? Yeah. So obviously when you go to the motherland, the, the homeland, motherland, yeah. um, so quick brief history. So my granddad came over here from India. Yeah. As a, he was the like granddad a, I met, he came to the White House? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so cool. yeah, he, he's the, he's the guy. He, yeah. So he made a decision. So we were from Gujarat in India. Yeah. Um, there's a big Gujarati population in the UK um, that migrated via Africa. Mm -hmm. But we didn't come via Africa. We actually, my granddad came from India directly as a, just a doctor um, who was put into a remote village in Wales because yeah. uh, there was a shortage of doctors and so on. So anyway, that's the story of how we ever got to the UK. Yeah. And when I'm out there in India, I'm like, wow, just a few little decisions. And I could have just been living here yeah. every day. Nor, you know, the life would have been, my life would have been so differently. My, my family's life would have been so different. Um, and then I started to look a bit more into it because I, I, I weird maybe or just very curious interested yeah. i'm always interested in history and so on i think you are as well yeah, yeah um and i wanted to find out a little bit more about my history like the the family and so on and like what be before my granddad what were people doing like what was what what are the, the stories? sequence of events that led to your life exactly yeah. and to my life and to uh this entire tribe that's now being pr produced right because right. so my you my great granddad <laughs> not my kids but He's my great granddad, right? So my granddad's dad. My my granddad is the youngest of three. Yeah. So three siblings, not a huge. Uh, and it, sorry, four. Uh, there was a, a daughter as well. Yeah. So he now has uh, kind of. He's obviously passed away about. Uh, he passed away about fifteen years ago, yeah. but he has around a hundred um, descendants from right. just just him and uh, his wife back then. So that was really interesting for me, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about that. How one, you know. One guy just making some decisions led to so much change for so many families and yeah. so many people. Um, so yeah, that was, that was kind of the, the the angle that I went down. Yeah. So, do you ever think that the reason why I was I was really interested by this is because I've been learning it quite a bit about my granddad, mm -hmm. um, some of his like life experiences and stuff. Right, my granddad had a wild life. Right. He, he was in prison. He started a band in prison okay. where they let him out on weekends so he, they could perform with their band. Right. Um, and there's a bunch of just like... Well, you got to be good for them to let you out on the right? weekend. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they made them like promise that they wouldn't run away. <laughs> um, but some of the stories I heard were kind of wild. And a train of thought I had, as soon as you said it, I was curious if you had it too, was he made something spectacular of his life that influenced like you say like uh, you know 100 descendants and, and stuff like that did that ever add any pressure to you like not to have kids but to like make decisions that you know people in three generations will be thankful for yeah it's a good question so i think often in the west you know how we talk about here we 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 do things differently to how they were done um, back home so um, for example we're talking about the socialization so, so the social circles are much yeah. smaller they're much more intimate but less regular yeah. um, it's a different kind of social dynamic um, so that's something that we've we've changed or has, has evolved as we've 
migrated over and um, and developed that. And I'd say the same goes for for what you're saying. So um, when we look at our lives before or you know, previous generations, it'd always be about the kids or about what's my mm. what am I setting up and and doing that. That's that's common knowledge, right? It'd yeah. always be about more. It'd be more more than yourself. What's the greater ambition? Mm. Um, whereas here in today's world, I don't know if we're taught to think like this or we we often get very centric like egocentric or you know we're very much about ourselves it's like no i'm doing it for my life i want to make sure i'm happy i want to make sure i'm enjoying myself which is great yeah which is really important but it we do forget to realize like uh the bigger picture and what uh what we need to do because i think as humans we are destined and we love being involved in something bigger than ourselves yeah, okay, and yeah, that's fair. And these days, when we're thinking about ourselves all the time and how we're happy and I want to travel here and make sure I'm traveling, we maybe put less emphasis on that. Um, well, I definitely think the the ripple effect of 100 descendants down, let's use 100 as a good number. Yeah. The ripple effect that we would have on our descendants 100 generations from, or 100 people away from now, is definitely smaller if you focus on yourself. Right. But... You know, you kind of have to question the people who devote their life to their kids is incredibly noble. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I I was just about to question how fulfilling that is. Mm. That's what I was about to do. But then what you said is humans have like an innate nature to um, or find fulfillment from the bigger picture. Right. So I don't know. Yeah, it's something that I'm going down the path of at the moment of... Mm what are we doing? I mean, we go down this all the time. You and I have these conversations like, is it all about money? Is it all about business? Is it all about feeling good? Mm. And it's, I think for me, I'm getting to the closest to the realization that all I want to do is just be part of something bigger. Yeah, okay. It doesn't have to be immediate. It's Mm -hmm. not like I, but working towards something bigger, that oh, making impact and so on. So you talk about kids. It's not necessarily that if you have kids, then you have made an impact. Yeah. But it's how much influence are you having beyond yourself? The little decisions you're making on a daily basis. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to work out. Oh, mm. I'm going to teach someone else how I work out so that they can mm. work out and they benefit from it. I don't know. The little things that you do. Oh, I'm going to teach this person how to do a certain task. Yeah. Or so tell, you, yeah. you don't have to be connected by blood. No, not no, at all. Yeah. Really, it's, it's, um, it's about the stories you tell other people, yeah. right? And they learn from that. That's how we they educate themselves and then they may go on to impact other people mm-hmm. and so on. And it's it, it, going through the whole great-grandfather story. I mean, he just quick to give you a quick thing. Mm-hmm. Our, our families before that, so many generations, I'm talking four or 500, four, 500 years ago, we were in the villages, right? There were no cities then or anything there. So these were the villages of India, mm-hmm. Rajasthan apparently. So... Mm-hmm. Gujarat and Rajasthan, we were from a different state. I didn't know that until this holiday. Yeah. Um, and it was my great granddad that decided to do something different to the family business. Yeah. I think we were in food items and whatever, gotcha. as, as I briefly know. And he decided to travel to Mumbai, mm. uh, Bombay at the time, and educate himself. So it was a huge decision that a lot of people didn't agree with because yeah. it was un, unheard of to go to a city. What, yeah. what is a city? You know, it's just not, there was Mumbai, even that wasn't a city we see today, yeah. um, but it just was there. But because he made that one decision, he not only impacted his hundred descendants that came after and, you know, went on to live better lives because he earned better. Yeah. He educated his family and so on. But he went on to run his own coal mining business. He started getting involved in engineering And started educating other people. And it was just incredible how many, when I was to think how many lives this guy has has touched. It's it's insane. I I hate to bring a bummer to to a conversation like this, but you're right. Like he must have come across some resistance. Yeah. And the reason why I think of that is uh, I've been talking to you about a fantastic TV show I've been watching called Rami. Right. And uh, Rami was born in America. His dad was born in uh, Egypt. Mm-hmm. and the story, it's such a well-thought-out TV show because every character has their own episode and you get to get a better understanding. And his dad's episode is genuinely heartbreaking right? because it's his dad as a young guy going to America trying to make it, and like they didn't have like fucking WhatsApp back then. It was, right. you know, pre-WhatsApp days. So <laughs> the way he would communicate with his family is he'd record little uh, cassettes. And it was really cool. It's a really emotional thing of just like, that I'm working in like this restaurant whilst I fund my uh, 
degree as I study this. Hopefully I'll be able to make you proud, whatever. And then he sends it back. And one of the most gut-wrenching parts is his dad sending a cassette back. And he listens to it. And I don't want to ruin it for you, but so spoiler alert, I'll put it on the thing. His dad is just like, I can't believe you abandon the family like this you really this and it really got to Ooh. me because i was just like along my bloodline i don't know who it is maybe it's my grand because i think it was my grandfather's decision to move over or mm-hmm. whoever it was i'm not actually that would be an interesting thing for me to find out whoever did that must have come across some resistance yeah and it's crazy because that belief that you're going to impact the bigger picture has to be stronger than letting down some people who are really important to you sure that's such a huge yeah. deal and I guess that's in any time you become disrupted, you disrupt your right. Your that could be applied to business. That could apply Anything. to so many things. You know, there's always going to be a path of resistance. Yeah, but it's really interesting to go through. You know, you're, you're talking about your granddad, right? Yeah. Um, and and some could go back in time and say, not saying your particular story, but any any decision of anyone to ever emigrate, move, or make, disrupt their their current status. Some may say good or bad decision. Mm. And then you start to look through and you look past the generations and you're like, well, it doesn't matter whether it was a good or bad decision <laughs> in the moment, right? It's yeah. the fact that some decision was made that yeah. went on to impact everyone. Now, it may have not been a good for d- decision for him in the moment, mm. but the fact is you've now gone to gone on to do what you've done. So yeah. good or bad, it doesn't matter. And what I'm trying to get at is maybe we sometimes overthink our decisions too much. Yeah. Uh, and saying, oh, what if it doesn't pan out the way it does? It's, yeah, that's really similar. interesting. Do you know something that I've actually been toying with in my mind? I don't know if I want to talk about this on the podcast, but we'll we'll talk Here about we it and find out whether you, yeah. you know, whether we want to cut this out or not. I I don't know if I want kids, man. Mm. I don't know. Yep. I really like the idea of being a parent. Mm-hmm. I, there's so many parts of that, but I also really like the idea of pursuing a life that would not allow me to have kids. Mm. Pursuing things that would take up so much of my time that I couldn't afford a child having a good enough life of its own. Right. Right. Because suddenly it is much more about, uh, your life suddenly becomes much bigger than that, much yeah. more than just what you have to offer the world. Sure. It's actually about looking after another human being. Mm-hmm. And I Google is of no help, by the way. Can we just talk about this? If you, you're quite young. Wait, right? what did you Google? Huh? What did you Google? I Googled, I don't, um, uncertainty about, wanting kids right something like that yeah. boy there wasn't a single article for men really there's not a damn one for men like yeah i spent ages googling it and there are plenty for women all of them okay. are for women and i i just i don't know and i i don't know do, do, i would argue that men maybe question this more because hmm. men don't really have like I don't know. I don't understand about body hormones and whatever, but I don't right. think men have that influence yeah. in that particular way. I could be wrong. Let me mm. know in the comments. Um, but the one interesting line, which is why you made me think of this, that I, I did read, I opened up a bunch of articles because mm. I figured, you know what? Let's see this from, if I was a woman, let's find out what, right. what the criteria is because I got nothing else. There's <laughs> nothing for men out here. And I, I was reading through and one of them was like, people often think that making the right decision is like super important, but actually what you might find more fulfilling in your life is actually just making a decision and committing mm, to it. Right. Because if you're so confused, and this again applies to business and, and life, if you're so confused, you don't act on either, mm-hmm. right? If you decide you don't want kids and then you actually later on down the line, you find out you want kids. Yes, you regret not having kids, but at least you've committed to one side and you've managed to find fulfillment in that route. Right. And same the other way around. Yep. If you decide you want to have, if you're uncertain and you decide you do want to have kids. And you have kids and you then you're kids. like, ah. Oh. You're like, ah, oh, damn, I, I wish I didn't have kids. Yeah. Well, then you've still got the kids. You've still mm. got the fulfillment in life from the children. Obviously, this depends on how you look at the world. Yeah, right. But yeah. I know, what you. I see where you're coming from. And I think that's such a great um, lesson that we need to just take to everything. Yeah. That By the way, it didn't help me answer my question. Yeah, I still okay. don't know. Yeah, and that's okay, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Um, mm. No, I'm saying I need to pick. I need to pick so that I don't walk down the middle. I need to go left or right so I don't walk down the middle and don't do either. Don't right, okay, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I follow now. Or the, it's don't, true. Tell me if I want kids. I'm just telling you, like, I'm just thinking, why, why is that such a necessity to pick now? Uh, I don't know. It's just been something else that's been on my it's mind. It's like, um, say you're 18. 18. You just 
just <laughs> he was <laughs> waiting for that <laughs> yeah. he just waiting for any shot to call me old yeah. no no you, you make you actually make a good point. he's closer to 25 than 30 yeah thanks bro. Good, i needed that thank yeah. you you're the same as so, <laughs> thanks that was more for you for me but i appreciate that yeah. it's a very valid point Ram. i'm sorry I, I just took a stab at you straight away um yeah, because if you, and I get that, I've heard that quite a lot, because that makes sense if you want to live to see your grandkids. Right. Right? It's like some sort of fact that the older you get, it's harder for you to have kids. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, yeah. 100% true. Yeah. Scientifically That's the body true. clock, yeah. Um, but the problem is I was conceived when my parents were in like their 40s and 50s. So, so you're just living on that. that kind yeah, of I'm just like some genetically, I must be built different. No, what, <laughs> what I'm essentially getting at is imagine you're 18 yeah. and you're like, Ram, I now have to decide you. whether I'm getting married or not. Mm-hmm. If I look back at my 18 year old self, like yeah. there was no need for me to even think of that decision, no. worry about that decision, whatever. No. Um so I, all I'm saying is I don't think there has to be a hard and fast about it. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay to be in between. Mm. But you can start to make decisions that maybe come before that. Like, mm. do I want to settle down? Yeah. Or do I want to... All right, let me run a wild idea by you. Yeah. You want to settle down. Yeah. You've got to find somebody. And that's a value that you have to align on, right? Of course. Of course. That's, that's very true. Yeah. Anyway, that's not. I don't, that's but not, sometimes okay, fine. we're getting into. Sometimes it. <laughs> it's very true. It's not about being. It's not about compromise, right? You need to make sure that you align on it. Yeah. But sometimes, if you meet the one, they help you understand your decision because it's a mutual decision between the two of you. You know, you don't yeah. just make a kid by yourself. It's it's you a don't. joint. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, it's what I'm told. But you 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 make a joint thing and. Yeah. It's just like anything else in a relationship where it's not like, I'm not, I don't call it compromise because that sounds bad. It's yeah. not like, oh, I'm going to give in and give you a kid. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's like, oh, if that means a lot to you, you mean a lot to me. Yeah. Maybe that's what works. I don't know. I'm just no, trying that's to, a, it's yeah. a wise observation. And that's why it's okay not to know. Yeah. Because you figure it out as you go along and you see the benefit of why yeah. you may want to try or not. Yeah. But I also think that, you know, it's, it's hard for me to say it, but... There are plenty of people that don't have kids but have family connections and their niece and nephew's kids and that's the best thing for them. Yeah, yeah. And they love that, yeah. Do you want kids, Ram? No, you don't know. Yeah, sorry, you got time. I don't think anyone's ever seen a kid and gone, unless they're like cute. Yeah. yeah. They're all cute, of course. But I mean, no one's hung out with a crazy kid and being like, yeah, I want one of you. It's no. Just, Do you know what? It's yeah. This whole conversation of influence, I think, is what sort of spurred me to bring this up well i think to me the the nicest part about having a a child isn't like ah oh, it's cute and whatever it's the fact that you get to have such a direct influence on a human being mm. and i know that can that can that, that can be flipped on its head that's a huge responsibility right. but there's a really nice element of instilling your values and morals and then kind of letting go right mm. you say you you you're, you give it half of what you believe to be right in the world and your partner gives it uh, gives it the, yeah. the child half of what they uh they believe to be right in the world and then at some point you kind of cut off that tie and say all right the world's your oyster you you go out and explore yeah and watching what they make of that mm. that's something that i f- i think would be incredibly fulfilling here's my here's my little take on it though go ahead. i think a lot of people put everything put their all their energy of giving beyond themselves Mm. towards the idea of a kid and having a kid that they forget how much impact they can have on a daily basis beyond just that idea Mm -hmm. and the reason this is obvious is because you start to see those parents that come through who give everything for their child everything sweat blood tears Mm. and the child may do something differently to what they envisage for that and it hurts and breaks them yeah because they've given everything in the expectation that it would follow through when in fact all you've created is an individual right like Mm. you have no other than a bit of dna (laughs) there's no you know that is its own person and all you can do is make the impact just like you can to someone down the road and so on it's the same same thing um so i don't know all i'm all i'm suggesting there is i think whilst kids sounds like an exciting thing and also a daunting thing Mm. um i I think people put a lot of emphasis on that being the only way they can have higher fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
right, thanks. Uh, yeah. uh, let me mull that over. I'll, I'll I don't know, know. all of it. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's really it. But yeah. Some yeah. F- solid advice. Solid. I'm going to come to you in a few years and no say, advice. oh, remember that advice that you gave no, me? No, and then I'm going to be like, oh, damn. Um, um, but yeah, it was anyway, really, really good trip. Good yeah. to connect with the tribe. That's, oh, shit, something that's you, the intro. <laughs> yeah. That's something you told me before I went, yeah, Sam mentioned. And mm. I think you did the same whilst you were uh, 100%. back home. Is uh, it, so You may say it's relaxing, not relaxing, but the mm. fact is it's different from what we do on a daily basis. And you're, yeah. you're with the people. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it recharges you. I hate to say the word, but like spiritually, mm. you know, it recharges you and it might deplete you physically, mentally, yeah. but it does recharge you spiritually. Definitely mentally, and I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's the hardest part to recharge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, it's a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, we got, we got quite a bit of time. Is there anything you want? To yeah. Discuss? So, I mean, what are we, what are we, um, what are our ambitions now for WP oh, for 2023? Shoot. Yeah, that's why. Where are we going? Uh, where are what we are going? What are we doing? Um, I, th- I think, I think one of the big takeaways at the moment is systems. Yeah. Uh, it sounds boring. It sounds mundane, mm. but as we are now moving to a new way of scaling new, mm. new level of business, it's much more, how can we just create systems in different areas that just are self-sufficient? Yeah. It's, uh, it's my big takeaway. I was, yeah. I was about to say, I remember the first episode of the new year in 2022. Right. And I said something along the lines of like, this is our year for like hyper growth. Mm. And I was about to call myself out and say I was talking crap back then. But no, actually, we, we, I mean, we did experience a lot of growth in, in 2022, but it seems minuscule in comparison to what we're planning this year. Yeah. <laughs> so right. I was going to say like, that's bullshit. But you're right. The way you described it is right. It's not about the size of the growth. It's about the, the difference uh, sorry, it's about the difference in strategy of how we're growing. Mm. It seems like last year it was more about grow at all costs and then figure it out. But now we kind of know. We do. And this comes to the thing of to you underestimate it. or you overestimate what you could do in a year. Yeah. But you underestimate what you can do in five. And I mean, we don't need five. Look at three years back yeah. and compared to where we are now. And that tells you everything about where we're going. Mm. Um, and that's why I... I'm not for or against New Year's resolutions or New Year targets or so yeah. on. I think they're great, um, and people do put good effort into them. Um, but for me, I'm I'm thinking more on the the components of a good year, mm-hmm. the, the the quality, what the quality of the meat. Like, is it is it a good year? Yeah. Um, is or, or what is you know is it superficial growth? Is it all just f- 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 uh, fuzzy dovey kind of stuff, or is it good quality stuff? We're heading in the right direction. We have a good business model. Um, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. What are some of the core components for this year, for you? Ooh, okay, so I just mentioned one of them being yeah. creating systems in in different areas. Uh, definitely want to get involved in more new activity. Right. So we're doing one at the moment of getting new licensing and regulation oh, yeah. internally. That, um, like that's really exciting. It is it's I think we've underestimated. Quite it. Yeah. intimidating. Yeah. It is, but it also, you know, well, I think once we'll do it, yeah. you know, it's cost, it's costly, time consuming, all of that. Yeah. But once we do it, we'll be like, why didn't we do this sooner? Um, I think we timed it right. We just had a meeting with our warehouse manager where we we're talking about this and we are acing it at this level. And the next level, this wouldn't be good enough yeah. for that level. Mm. Um, and so I don't think we could just stay here. Like, sorry, I think we're we're acing it at what we would consider the lower league. So actually right. it's not, but like, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And the next step seems quite intimidating because there's a lot to, to play with those, those yeah. boys. Up but that's there. in the big boy league. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so there's a lot. So that's why it's intimidating, but also, you know, why not? <laughs> we, Absolutely. We've got to figure that one out. This is it. And, and from that, you know, new adventures. So I think the biggest thing that I want to do is just take more action on those new things. You know, we're talking, we're we're working on our, our new products and our own product brands and so on. Yes. And there's a lot of work there, but it's action. And yeah. we are we are like ninety percent of the way with a lot of things. Yeah. We just need to start taking more action in those areas. So, yeah, that's really my focus. How we can develop, and I think that's where we're going to really see the nice growth in the longer term. Maybe not in six months, but in in the next few years. So yeah, all focus on that. How about cool. you? Uh, I can say this. I'm 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 moving further and further away from operations. Mm-hmm. That's been 
my baby and my job title for a, a good couple of years now. Um, I love it, but again, it's become it's become my blind spot. Right. I have to openly admit this. Uh, it's something that in the beginning I was able to walk in and just see so much opportunity for change, growth, and, and better things. Um, but it's not anymore. Um, but I've now, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time. I'm working a lot more with client success and mm. our product offering, you know, our, our whole service package. And I'm, I've got that like giddiness within me. I've got this thing where I can see all of these elements that I'm like, oh, I can, I can make that better. I right. can do this. I can mm. do that. And it's important to keep that going, to keep that sort of spark alive. Um, so I think this year for me will be a lot more focused on refining the the product that we offer. Mm. I say product. It's not a, a physical offer. It's a service based product, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of elements to it. Um, so developing that, I'm very excited about that. Um, I am really excited about working more in the the sales element. Yep. And I've often talked very negatively about sales. And mm-hmm. I had this realization. I was actually from Ollie. Yeah. Um, I was like, how did you stick it out with sales? Every time I tried it, I hated it. Um, and this time around, I really love it. And he made a really good point. He goes, I started enjoying it when I really started to believe in the thing I was selling. Mm. And that's why I think I'm really enjoying it. Um, talking about this whole... This, the intro was a great segue to this. Yeah. I can literally see the impact through numbers, through sales figures, through you know what our clients get out of it, brand yeah. growth, awareness, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so I, I have this really strong belief in the system that works. Mm. And also, I'm res- you know I'm trying to fit, make it even better. Right, that's it. You're now in control of what's not maybe there yet. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, you know I'm involved in new business, but I'm not that heavily involved. Um, But the actual existing business is something I've been moving slowly towards. I'm really excited to get my teeth into that. Oh, very excited. Yeah. And it's it's been great to see you. You're already involved heavily. And I think one of our biggest things here at WP is we have a lot of our new business comes from referral or word of mouth. Yeah. You know, surprisingly, you know, we are, we are actively involved in other areas of marketing, but the best Best type of business, we yeah. you know, openly is is when a client recommends us to someone else. Yeah, and I think that's that all comes down to us needing to be the best. Yeah, have you heard the podcast with Rafe yet? I no, only seen the reels. Yeah, he talks about that. Like he's that's a thing that he's really proud of is that his whole business is built on referrals. Mm. And I asked him on the I was like, do you find yourself selling much? And he goes, not really, because if people are coming in based on a referral, they already have that like check. Yeah, like, is this person actually going? Is this person? In the agency world. Yeah. And uh, so this year, I think I'm going to count the, I'm going to really try and stop calling us an agency. Because mm. I, I, I think. What are we? Huh? We are growth partners. Mm. We are something partners. You know, we are, we work in conjunction with a business, right? The way our billing system works is we're incentivized to grow a brand. So we're partners. Yeah. I do like partnership. Something. Yeah. yeah. Growth partners. Something partners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he said, you know, in, in the agency world, how many times have we been burned by an agency? Mm. The reason why we have a, a hand picked selection of agencies we trust is because we've been through like 20, Right. but never forget your clients are the ones who have also been burned by 20. Yeah. So they come to you with this thing of like, are you going to burn me or not? Yeah. But when you're referred by a client, then no, you don't really have to sell to them. You're only here because I've proven myself to a friend of yours mm-hmm. or to somebody who works with you. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and you're going to know if I'm lying or not because right. I did the exact same thing with that person who referred you. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the, I, I get really excited about speaking to people who have been referred to us um, because we can just have an open and honest conversation. And if they like us, generally is the case then, yeah you're definitely right and it stops us being commoditized as well because we know what we offer um there are many good talented people in the industry Mm. but what we offer is of a very high grade Mm. and it's very hard from one little call to Mm. for that to come across and yeah when when we're being commoditized against people that we you know agencies that are offering a completely different service to what we do it's very tough Um, yeah that's why i think we need to in the beginning i think we had to go by the agency thing because yeah. to be even considered you need to be in the same pool as a, right. the, the bigger group of people uh, but this year i i don't know i think i think agency downplays what we do mm. um because you can live without an agency right your business can still boom in the department your agency is dependent you're depending your agency on yep. if you drop the agency you can still sort of succeed there 
Mm. But if we're your growth partners, if you're getting the WP full service, yep. we can't be replaced by one other agency. Interesting. You can be replaced. We could essentially be replaced by five other agencies, but it's going to cost you five times as much. Mm. And it's going to, it's not going to yield the same results. It's not that cohesiveness. Those five agencies aren't going to communicate as well with each other as our five departments are. Interesting. Very interesting. So yeah. partners. I don't, I don't want to say agency this year. Growth partners. Yeah. Accelerates partners. I like it. Something. Very, very good. All yeah. right. That's time. Yeah. We got to for, we got for a, another meeting. Yeah. Here. Nonstop. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been a hectic Thursday. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, just before we wrap up. Yeah. Oh, someone yeah. asked me when I was uh, in India, they were like, how do you have time to record all these podcasts <laughs> and so on? And I, I literally said, we don't. You know what? <laughs> Firstly, without Sam and Ram, yeah. like they will grab me. Yeah. And they will be like, we've got something to do. You literally like schedule it and Ram definitely does that. Huh? Um, Not for long. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I'm going to let you finish it. No, no, is this... Um, I was, yeah, no, so I was like, no, we don't. But we, we're grabbed, we're in the room and we record half an hour, 45 minutes, bam, yeah. without fail. And I think that was an incredible thing for last year, guys, that like... You know, we'd be hectic. We'd be busy. It'd be Q4 and still managed to record. Committed. Yeah. Missed a couple of weeks, but we was right back. We were right yeah. back on it. Do you think I've got like baby fever? Because we're looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going. It's going to be 19 yeah. next week. I can't keep saying this. Yeah. Um, no, you've 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 always been very sort of grown and mature. So I hope you keep growing. I hope you keep editing the podcast well, even though you won't physically be here or you're half assing this shit from away. One day you'll be close to 30. Yeah, one know. day, man. Yeah. I gave him some great advice the other day. We really are running out of time. But I was just, I was living life in pain mm. because I'm 27 and apparently that's my life now. Okay. That's all around this. I was just like, do you know what? I've realized at 27, I don't have like pain-free days. I just have days where it's the pain I prefer. Like, okay. I prefer to be sore from working out than to be creaky from like being still. Ah, <laughs> that, so you're choosing one thing. That's what I get, yeah. I was like, Ram, for the love of God, the one thing you can do, I asked him, I was like, do you have days where you just don't feel pain? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, you got to... What is that? What's that Yeah, like? start taking this shit seriously. So you don't, <laughs> when you're 27 and you're hiring your, your apprentice, you can actually be like, yo, I'm passing this down. There's some Sounds wise words. Different. Yeah, just some wise words. But anyway... All right. Let's end this. Thank you. If you uh, enjoyed the episode, be sure to comment, subscribe, like, do whatever you can, share it uh, wherever you can, YouTube, TikTok. Are we on TikTok? Tinder, no, Hinge. Tinder, Hinge. No, we got taken down. Oh, we got taken down on TikTok. <laughs> uh, we lasted like a day, didn't we? Why did we get taken down? Huh? Oh. For, for speaking the truth. Speaking the, speaking the truth. <laughs> the Matrix doesn't want us. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we're going to get taken down. Everywhere. I know. <laughs> that did not help our case. Yeah. But yeah, if you enjoyed it, make sure you do whatever you can to, to stop us getting taken down. So, see you next time.